This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's Alex Bennett, and it is the Ramble, and we go straight on till midnight Eastern Daylight Time, or Eastern Standard Time. I'm still in my daylight time crap. Anyway, uh, we're going to have a lot going for us tonight, and a lot to discuss with our Citizens Panel, but before we do that, we have someone else that we've got to check in with. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we call out to the left coast of the United States of America, America? America to talk with our favorite uh, person because we we really enjoy talking with this guy. Larry, ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Happy Thanksgiving, Alex. Uh, yeah. I'm just uh, I'm just trying to uh, hire all of a Charlie Rose's interns. Getting ready, for, <laughs> getting ready for the new year. <laughs> oh man, I'll tell you something. I. Uh, uh, I was going to talk about this later on, but uh, I can talk about it now, I guess, with Charlie Rose. Um, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> 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 I've heard he is such a prick. Oh, really? He, I, yes. What I've noticed, for a guy who's been in TV so long, he seems like, he, I, I never thought he seemed too bright. Yeah, well, he, I, didn't know, he, I didn't know he's a mean guy as well. Well, here, here's here's the skinny I've gotten on him over the years. Okay, number one, he never shows up on time for his show. He will leave world leaders waiting for him. Wow! And and he always shows up late because he's got this this uh, deal with uh, Bloomberg where he uses their studios and it's his studio. He can just walk in anytime he wants to and do a show. So they say, okay, you got an interview at two o'clock, and sometimes he doesn't show up till three. You know, mm-hmm. uh, he can't do that with his morning show over at CBS. Otherwise, he'd come in and the show would be over. But uh, with his uh, talk show, that's been the case. Uh, I, I've heard that he's not the nicest guy in the world. That he's not a great guy to work for. He that he's a prima donna. You know, so I mm-hmm. when I heard this about Char, and also I found I've always found when I watched him, for him to be a little, uh, what's the term I'm looking for, fatuous. Uh, and uh, so when I heard the news that he got caught in the middle of this entire scandal, I went, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? You know. Well, so far, I think you and I are the only males in America that haven't been named in a scandal the past week. Yeah, the only problem is we're, <laughs> we are not famous enough to be named. you got to be scandal. famous. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, women, I guess, could come out and talk about me, although I had one. I, I, I put a thing up on my, uh, on my Facebook page that said, uh, Gabnet is sad to announce that we are suspending Alex Bennett over sexual allegations. Of course, Gabnet is my company, so I'd have to fire yeah. myself. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I said that, and people started writing like crazy. You know, and they, they all knew it was a joke because uh, most of them, a couple of them went, "What? What? I didn't know." But one of my ex girlfriends wrote and said, "He, he, he sexually abused me for years, and I loved it." <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I mean, I, uh, you know, I, there's a part of me that feels sorry for some of these people because uh, any, any nutcase can come along and claim that, uh, that you did something when you didn't do anything. Yeah. If you're charged now with social media, you're, you're dead. Well, I mean, if somebody comes forward and says he did this and thus to me, uh, number one, you well. Let me give you an example of something. The other day, I met up with a guy uh, who's uh, helping us with a project we're working on, uh, and he's a professor over at I think NYU. And uh, he said, "Good to meet you, Alex. I've always wanted to meet you because uh, you fucked my ex-wife." <laughs> 
And uh, I said, oh, really? He says, yeah, we weren't married at the time, but you know, I later went on to marry her, and she had had sex with you. And I said, well, what was her name? And he said the name, and I couldn't remember her. And it was not a, <laughs> it, it was not a common name like Carol or Barbara or whatever. It was a, a, a name that, you know, probably I would remember if I remembered it. I couldn't remember it. Now, those were drug-fueled days when I lived in New York, you know, when we were doing pot and LSD and everything. So maybe under the influence of drugs, I had had sex with her, but I couldn't remember her. And I said, please don't be offended that I don't remember her and don't tell her because I don't want to offend her. But, you know, you could have someone suddenly say, if you had a rather excessive sex life, you could have somebody accuse you and then you could say, what's their name? And you go, well, I don't remember that person, but, you know, what do I do here? Do I apologize? What do I do? Uh, and um, so I, I can see how some of these people don't even remember these people, okay? Um, and it's a he said, she said kind of situation because what it could, could have been completely consensual, uh, and in fact, she could have been the pursuer or whatever, is only between the two of you. And today, if a woman accuses a guy who is considered guilty, without question. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm frightened for guys right now. Um, I'm frightened for guys because I think that most guys are good. Uh, and yet there are women out there, and I've, I've known many of them, I, I can tell you right now I've n never done anything that I think that anybody could come back at me with, okay? But I've known a couple of crazies I went with who today would turn around and maybe say, oh, yeah, he molested me or he da, 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 mm -hmm. just because they're crazy. And then I've got to defend against that. And nobody's going to believe me because I'm the guy. Right. Well, that's terrible. It's just terrible. And so I, you know, I, 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 you know, like I, I felt a certain amount of uh, regret for Louis C.K. Uh, and that should r get close to home because you're a comedian. I don't know if you knew the guy. I had him on my show many I, times. I worked with Louis years ago. Seemed like a nice guy. He had some yeah. huge success. I don't that uh, what he's charged with. I guess what he said he did just seems to me like such an odd thing to do but uh, i don't know i was that's what i wanted to ask you can he come back from that i don't know okay i mean uh i have a good question for you if the those uh, the the allegations that have already been made years ago against woody allen were to be made to, against him today would he survive it i think he, today he'd be dead yeah but back then he survived it. Yeah. So uh, don't we have a little double standard going here? Well, I think it's all the Internet now, you know. Also, Woody married the woman. Yeah. You know, so that took some of the onus off of it. You could just go, well, what a prick he was towards, uh, uh, you know, towards Mia. But then again, she's a crazy nutcase, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but... Uh, you know, he would not have survived that today. He would not no. be making another movie. Right. So, I mean, I think I, somebody got mad at me when I referred to this whole thing as a fad. But in a way, it falls into that category. Whether it's a good fad or a bad fad, we can argue. But it's a fad nonetheless because all of a sudden, all these people are coming out with Me Too. Yeah, I, th I think you nailed it. It's, it's a fad. You know, uh, I mean, uh, I certainly don't want to besmirch uh, any woman who feels that she has been wronged by a Charlie Rose or by a uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein. These are men of great power, and I, uh, and I, I don't want to minimize their pain and their anguish. On the other hand... Uh, come on, Louis C.K. asked these women, do you mind if I pull it out? He asked them. He asked permission. <laughs> and nobody there in that room said, no, Louis, keep it in your pants. And then when he pulled it out 
and started jerking off, nobody apparently left the room. <laughs> now he so gave, unless, unless he bolted the door. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he gave them the out, and they say, "Well, he was a powerful man, and they were looking for work for him, or they were working for him, and they didn't want to upset him." And blah blah blah. I'm going bullshit. You. He asked, "Do you mind if I pull out my dick?" And, uh, you know, and for this, he's being given the same weight as the accusations against Harvey Weinstein. I mean, yeah. how stupid is that? Harvey sounds like it was actual physical assault <laughs> or oh, rape. I, I, no, Harvey had been doing this for years. People knew this in Hollywood. Nobody ever did anything about it. It was, oh, well, that's, that's Harvey. They gave him a pass. So as long as they gave him a pass, don't you think he was going to keep doing it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were joking about it, the awards and everything. Yeah, it, exactly, exactly. So you know, I mean, I mean, I, uh, uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm glad they got Harvey Weinstein, but I think Louis C.K. is going a little too far. I think the Al Franken thing, uh, and I'm not standing up for Franken because I agree with his politics. Okay. But I heard the other day that the guy who took the picture, obviously Franken couldn't be taking the picture, right? He was mm -hmm. groping the breasts. Said she was fully awake. She knew what was happening. It was meant as a gag photo. That's and now she's going out there and, and griping and moaning about how he stuck his tongue down her throat. And, da, 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 da. and you know, I mean... And she's a Republican, by the way, who voted for Trump. So, I mean, how much, you know, what kind of weight do we give these things? We seem to be giving them all the same weight. We At least we've been metting out the exact same punishment to all of them. Yeah, and I think uh, Woody Allen did say he was very disturbed by the fact that uh, people are being ruined, mainly on because it's, it's all social media. Um, yeah. Well, some of it's social media. I mean, some of it, some of it. Uh, uh, oddly enough, I mean, like uh, Charlie Rose has admitted to what he did, and I just read it, they CBS had suspended him yesterday, and now they have fired him. Um, and if he never works another day in his life, I don't care, you know. But I do care about Louis C.K. I do care about Con uh, Al Franken. Then they just got John Conyers, who is the uh, the black senator, you know, who's very considered a very noble person. He was in the marches in the South when he, you know, he, when he was younger and got beaten up. And he's always been on the side of of the right kind of things, you know, not right wing, but right the right uh, sentiments. And uh, they now say that he has been accused of using his power he supposedly paid off uh a uh, he used his own congre uh, congressional uh, money or whatever to pay off a woman uh who had charged him with something so mm -hmm. you know uh so now we got Conyers uh in in this mix i mean wh where does it stop you know <laughs> and we're and, gonna have to empty out congress the way it's going. well i mean the question is we're we're all of them are being given the same punishment as a Harvey Weinstein. All of them are being given the same punishment as a Kevin Spacey. And the fact is that the situation with Louis C.K. couldn't be more dissimilar. And um, what got me was this one woman, Pamela Adlin. I don't know if you know who she is, uh, but she's an actress, and she was on Californication. And for years, she has worked with Louis. They have done projects together. His show, Louis, she helped write. Uh, I mean, she may have directed an episode of it. Her show, uh, they were both writers on the show. She, he was the director of the show, uh, Better Things. Uh, she has known this guy for years and worked very closely with him. When this whole thing comes down, she immediately says she no longer wants to use the same manager, which is... Uh, Louis's manager, and uh, uh, she no longer wants to have anything to do with Louis C.K. Well, 
I think it's a little ingenuous because if you've been working with this guy for maybe the past 10 years, very closely on projects. In fact, she was the female, played his wife on um, Lucky Louie, which he had on HBO years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So she goes back just forever with this guy, and this guy has taken his fame and shown it on her to let her shine. Okay? Uh, so I think, you, you know, there's a certain amount of respect that is owed him from her. Mm -hmm. And she throws him to the wolves immediately. Well, she didn't know? Come on. You were close, that closely with this guy and you didn't know he was up to this kind of behavior? I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday who said the fact that Louis C.K. exposed himself to women in his hotel rooms was common knowledge. You know? So don't sit there and suddenly get holier than thou because, oh, I, how could, I didn't know he was up to that sort of, you know, stuff. <laughs> Bullshit, yeah. Pamela. You knew. Fuck you. You know, I have less respect for you now, and I had a lot of respect for you before. So, you know, it just the whole thing is just sad. It is sad. I think uh, what he has to do is, let's see, lie low for a year, then you go to rehab, then you do an apology tour, and then he'll be back. No, you, he, you go on stage and do the same thing you've always done, talk about masturbation. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I just, I, I think uh, he may be able to come back, but he was in such oh, a. I think he will. But maybe not to the same strong position he's in. He was in prior to this. Mm -hmm. And and I, but more than that, I worry for guys. I just think we're we're having to defend ourselves against things that we may not even remember. Yeah, things from 30 years ago, it's, uh, what do you do? Yeah. I mean, I keep trying to search through my mind. Was there any, you know, because I was always very good about this sort of thing. I was never, I my greatest fear was to make somebody feel uncomfortable, okay? So I would never do anything to make a woman feel uncomfortable. I would, you know, I would certainly come on to them. Uh, it's the male-female mating dance. Uh, but I wouldn't take it to a point where I was being pushy or uh, where I was making the other person feel uncomfortable. Um, exactly. You know, so, uh, but nevertheless, I'm sure there are women out there who would, if I were really famous, come forward and say, in thus and thus, he, he took me over to his place and he gave me drugs and I didn't know what I was doing and I had sex with him. Well, the fact that you asked for the drugs and the fact that you took your clothes off first has nothing mm -hmm. to do with it, you know. Right. Uh, because I'm going to sit there having to defend myself. And uh, I'm, I'm really getting a little sick and tired of these apologies, you know. Um, the latest person to really be mired by this, Jeffrey Tambor. You know he, who he is. He does a show called Transparent. But uh, yeah, my one of my favorite all time, <laughs> the Hank on the uh, Larry Sanders. Show. Exactly, and he says that you know he doesn't see the things in the same way, but that he's quitting the show because he just doesn't like the allegations. He doesn't want to be around an atmosphere where those allegations have been made. Uh, he he did a little little. Less than a uh, mea culpa, you know, like, oh, well, you know, he says, you know, this normal thing. If somebody was offended by my actions, I'm certainly sorry for that, but I don't really remember it in the same way. And we're living in an, and then he mentioned the atmosphere, the political atmosphere we're living mm -hmm. in right now. And I really found that, uh, you know, uh, better than all these other people going, well, you know, I'm really apologize, blah, blah, blah. I would say, if I were counseling somebody right now, I'd tell them not to apologize. Even if they felt they were guilty, I wouldn't tell them to apologize. And the reason is because this is going to be used against them. Yeah, it's you know, never accepted and it's used against you. It, it's never accepted and it's used against you. So, as Lenny Bruce once said, if you cheat on your wife and she finds out about it, deny it. Don't ever <laughs> admit to it. Just deny it, deny it, deny it. 
And if in she this comes point, home when you're in bed with another woman, deny it at that e- point. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and you know, because th- these apologies are now being used against these people. Yeah. Or if there was a suit filed against somebody and they settled it, they're using that against them. Oh, he must have been guilty. He settled it. No, a lot of times a lawyer will tell you better to pay the money than to spend the money it's going to cost to defend it. Right? Uh, all the time yeah yeah yeah, you would get that advice from a lawyer and it doesn't paying off a a person doesn't mean you were guilty it simply means that the expense of defending it would be greater than the uh, amount of money you'd have to pay them to pay it off so Mm -hmm. it's sad it's very sad so uh have you thought back on your life and sit, yeah. and taken taken an inventory of the women you've had sex with and wondered if <laughs> any of them could say anything about you. Fortunately, it's a very short list. So, uh, <laughs> the other thing I was let's see the I, I'd like to rhyme women's names usually in a leering manner, which I used to do on your show. So it, I don't know if that's harassment or not. Like what? Give me an example. You know, Melissa, I want to kiss you. Remember, we used to do that on the show. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, you could argue that was for, for the show, you know. Yeah. That you probably wouldn't say that to her off the air. Well, I do. Uh, in clubs and stuff, I do. And sometimes I do it from the stage. Yeah, so. yeah, right. But it's part of the act. Yeah. So is that, is that uh, yeah, is that uh, harassment? So I don't think if, if if anyone ever say, oh, I find that uncomfortable, I would immediately back off. So. Well, no, they would say, uh, 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 Alex harassed me. Well, how do we know he harassed you? Well, listen, just having sex with him is harassment. <laughs> 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 you know? I mean, I, I just, I, I really had to sit there and do an inventory, and I'm thinking, you know, I mean, I do know there are some women, a couple of women I've known that were are crazy enough to make the accusation, but it wasn't wouldn't be true, you know. No, but, and like you said, you gotta if you're really famous, then you're the target. And again, and I say this because I'm defending guys now, is that guys right now are in a bad way that this way, you know, because they're being accused of shit. Or they can be, and they have really no defense. They're going to lose their job. They're going to lose all the income that they have based on a rumor, based on a, uh anonymous, sometimes anonymous accusation. Yeah. You know, and, and, the, and I love the way these companies act. The first thing uh, they do is they say, we have suspended Mr. Rose. And then within 24 hours, we have fired Mr. Rose. You know, they want to seem like they're looking at the situation. But I don't know. I mean, I almost canceled my Netflix because of the Kevin Spacey thing. Not because he was guilty or innocent or whatever, but they were so quick to judge. Yeah, there's no trial anymore, that's for sure. Yeah. It's the Salem all over again. Kind you know? of is, yeah. Yeah, and and you know, and and then the the women are sitting out there, and they're they're belly aching and crying. Uh, you know, the, not the women who've been offended by Louis' penis or whatever, but everybody else, going. You know, this must stop. This kind of thing has to end. Well, it, it yes, I was saying that when I was. 14 years old, you know, and I heard about the Hollywood casting couch. I said, that's terrible. You know, we've been saying this for years. Uh, But don't suddenly say that, you know, every guy who ever came on to any woman is suddenly guilty of being a harasser. I mean, half the time those women would go, why didn't he come on to me? Am I ugly? You know, I mean, I I don't know. It's It's a war on men. You're absolutely right. It is a war on men. And I got to just say that most guys I know are nice. And they're uh, they're gentlemen and they're decent, you know. And this idea that all men are dogs, you know, is is an absolute uh oh, I call women who say that uh, you know, female chauvinist pigs. Mhm. Uh because they are typing every guy and most guys are just nice. Guys are sweet. Guys are kind of dumb, you know, when it comes to this stuff. 
you know, we're kind of goofy. Uh, you kind know, of goofy. Yeah. We've unfortunately males have the uh, curse of the sex drive, which doesn't help us. But well, no, we are we we are. Well, I hate to say it, put it this way, because I will now get letters. We're meant to inseminate the herd. <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, and we have to fight that because we live mm-hmm. in a social situation. Hey, look, I looked at the clock. We've run out of. We've just twenty four, twenty five minutes have just flown by. Time flies when you're talking about Charlie Rose. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Bubs, want to do this again next week? Let's do it again. Okay, we're going to do it again next week. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous, the incredible Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our old friend Larry, and we are so happy that he uh, he could join us uh, this evening. Let me turn my mic down. I'm blasting out there. Hi, how are you, everybody? Good to see you. We've got a lot of people watching tonight, and uh, I don't know why all of a sudden our viewership has, like, exploded. And uh, maybe part of it has to do with the citizens panel, so I should probably get to that citizens panel. Let me just set a few things up here. Got to turn on the uh, Skype lines. If you want to if you want to get in touch with us, best way to just find out all the information is go, go to gabnet.net. That's gabnet.net. And on that page, uh, on the right-hand side, you will see a, a complete tutorial of all the ways that you can get a hold of us, including a phone number at the bottom if you don't want to use Skype. But we use Skype but usually as our, as our method of communication because uh, the sound is so good. And also, we can see the people. When we have a citizens panel, we don't just have one person talking to the talk show host like on a lot of other shows. We have the talk show host talking with, well, I can go upwards to nine, ten people at a time. And when that happens, it's very helpful if you have a camera and we can see you and you can raise your hand when you want to say something so that I can kind of be a a better ringmaster. Uh, So we use Skype. But you can also use the phone. You can phone. We won't be able to see you, and you won't be able to see anybody else unless, of course, you're turning on the uh, the Facebook page, and then you'll be able to see us, you know, all all talking to each other, but not in, in real time because it's delayed by about 30 seconds, I think, between us and what goes out there. But anyway, our phone lines are open, and I'm sitting here jabbering away because I'm waiting for people to call so that I can uh, start this little conversation and show you what the Citizens Panel is. But there are a lot of people tonight, there have been a lot of people lately um, watching uh, us, and I'm, I'm glad that you are. Anyway, uh, here, comes, here comes the man everybody loves to hate on this program. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. Hey, me, me too. Huh? Me too. You too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to. I want to grab him by the pussy. Oh, oh, oh really? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I think this stuff has just gone too far. I, you know? I happen. You know, you and I don't agree on a lot, but I think we will agree on that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just getting to be a bit too much, um, and uh, it, it's it's it, it. We 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 have some more today. I mean, we. You know, when we yeah. went off the air on Friday, we had a certain bunch of people that had been accused. Hello, it, Scott. It, Hi. It even killed, uh, uh, what's his name, from the Partridge family. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David Cassidy died. We just yeah. got word of that. Uh, but we knew that was going to happen because he'd been in the hospital for the last couple of days. And they, Kidney he, failure, right? Huh? I don't Kidney know, failure. I don't know what it was, but he had dementia. Well, that we do know. You know. Oh, did he? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he ha- he had yeah. dementia. Um, yeah. uh, he died at sixty-seven, rather young. I mean, you know, for me that's young. I, I lo- <laughs> he's a, he he was a youngster when he died. You know. Uh, hello, Mike. How are you? Um, good, good, good. I I um um. But w- you know, since we went off the air on Friday, it's just a whole new group of people has been added to the "you're banished from the world" list. You know, um, uh, uh, and and uh, the Al Franken thing. It, there's, there's some nice developments in the Al Franken thing. Uh, something like I don't know, thirty women at Saturday Night Live 
wrote a letter saying we've all known Al over the years because he's been a member of the SNL family, and whenever we've worked with him, there has never been any sign of this kind of behavior. And I, I think it's all political. Oh, I think in that case, it's very political. I found that, This is something I found out the other day because Shecky had read it somewhere. You know, obviously, there was somebody taking that picture. You know, it wasn't a selfie. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And there was somebody taking that picture. And the person who took the picture said that was all a setup. She was awake. She knew what was happening. It was meant to be a gag photo. Mm -hmm. So what are we getting all apoplectic about? We're having we're going to have a we're going to have a, a Senate investigation into his activities. Well, good. Yeah. Let them. And if they clear them, they clear them. Yeah, that's wasting our money. You know, it's a waste, you know, waste of time. And my what they're. What they're finding out is is that the Senate and the House don't live by the same rules that we do, and they're all pedophiles. That's why uh, <laughs> or we'll get elected, because he's just one of them. Yeah, yeah, he'll bring the kids along. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello, Jeff. Uh, How are more you? More the merrier. Boy, Jeff has a nice picture tonight. You're nice lighting and everything. You look great, you know? I'm in the other room. I mean, I'm an old man. I'm, I'm, I'm probably a little younger than you, right, Jeff? Nope. You are? I, you, I, uh, yeah. I am younger than you. Yeah, you're younger than me is what I'm saying. Right. Uh, and, I'm and, 72. Yeah. And you, you're you one of the best looking old guys I know. Oh. You really are. You just, you're just, <laughs> you're, you, 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 hey, another wait, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Did I just come on to you? I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize yeah. for that. Like are we rap. going out for dinner, sir? What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Charlie Rose is 75. He don't look so bad, you know. Yeah, he looks horrible. He <laughs> looks. <laughs> he looked a disaster. Well, they, the they, caught him, they caught him. They uh, caught uh, him on the street uh, last night, walking home, and uh, they asked him some questions or something. And he looked like he'd been drinking. He looked like he was in <laughs> his <laughs> cups. But he's not on the street. Yeah. Um, he but probably was drinking. <laughs> but we probably should take each of these individually. I mean, they keep coming out. There was one tonight you probably didn't even catch. What's that? John Lasseter of Disney. Yeah. The head of Pixar. The guy who started Pixar. Uh, oh, he, he's taking a sabbatical for six months to kind of reassess his behavior with his with his with uh, the people who work for him. And Didn't supposedly, Steve Jobs start Pixar? All, all, uh, no, Pixar was started by Lucas, oddly enough. It was start, actually, it was Lucas and, and Lasseter. And then oh. Jobs bought it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, here, here's the point. Here's the point I'm trying to make. So, uh, uh, where was I? What, what was the point uh -oh. I was going to make? I lost it all. It's me. Uh, no, I was talking about um, um, John Lasseter. Oh, yeah, about Lasseter. The, uh, I, you can't make much out of it. It just says that he's taking time out because... There are certain things and behaviors that he was not, he, blah, 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 right? And, and then there is like an allusion to the fact that he was a hugger, that he used to like to hug people. Oh. Uh. You know? So now has it come down to this dastardly act is hugging? Yeah. Hey, you can't say hug it up anymore, huh? You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, you know? And, and I wish... Some of these guys stop, uh, stop apologizing, you know. Just deny it because here's the thing. It's like I said to Bubbles, if you say that you're sorry and that your your behavior was bad and you want to apologize to those people you've hurt, you're still going to get punished just as badly as if you deny it. So deny yeah, so it. So you're following you're following Trump's advice. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't there. Well, I had nothing to do with grabbing that woman by the pussy. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, well, look, you know, and, and every day that this goes on, the the true, it's almost like, you know, when you were talking about football players taking the knee, you know, that originally it was because he was protesting the fact that they're, you know, black lives matter and blah, blah, blah. And by the end, it, lost all that meaning because everybody was doing it but not for the same reason well what's happening here is the same thing 
I mean, uh, it every day that passes by, you're just getting weary of this, and you know, is this going to stop? And then all of a sudden, I found myself as a male feeling that I was being attacked, you know, and that I was being hurt. None of you guys, I I don't think any time in your life could be accused of this kind of behavior. And yet, you, all guys are now being painted with the same brush. You know, all men are like, you know, those lousy guys, you know? And I, I think know, it's time we as guys stood up. Yes, Mike. Yeah, uh, there's a lady on Air Force One. It just happened today. She, she had sexual harassment on the uh, last Asian trip with Trump on Air Force One. Just uh, came out. What, what, what was it? You're not really explaining it very well. I just, I just uh, playing grab ass with her on the Air Force One plane. Who? Air Trump was playing grab ass? Somebody was. Oh, somebody was. was. What, what, yeah. It wasn't Trump? No, unfortunately. Oh, oh okay. So somebody played grab ass, you know. Um, God, uh, you know, I mean. But, yes, yes, Jeff, that, Jeff. Jeff. How long are you allowed to touch? No more touching. No more touching. No more touching. You know, no touching. When I hear that that uh, uh, some woman accused uh, Franken of taking a picture of her and patting her on the ass, you know, I'm, this is, and then we put this in the same category with rape. You know, we're being a little severe here. You know, we're metting out too much of a punishment. It's like saying you stole a candy bar from that store. We're going to give you the same penalty a murderer gets. We're going to execute you. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's pretty much what we say. And, uh, I, you know, there are all these different realms of severity. I mean, looking back on it, how, how bad was, was uh, um, uh, what's his name, the comedian? Um, Bill Cosby? You no, know, no, not Bill Cosby. God, he's... Oh, uh, your, your buddy there, C.K. C.K., Louis C.K. C.K. I mean, how, when you're looking back at Louis C.K. now, and that's... You know, do you know it's only been like two weeks since they outed Weinstein? Do you realize yeah. that? Wow. Already? It's like it's been longer. I know it the seems like it's been longer, but tonight somebody said two weeks. What? The CK thing sounds very similar to the Charlie Rose thing. No, no. The Charlie Rose I thing saying... Walk out the robe and, uh, yeah, but you there's, know. Uh, uh, there's a, there, there was a bit of a difference here. Number one, CK asked for permission. Yeah. That, that was for starters. Uh, in one case, supposedly, I mean, this is all alleged, so let's keep it in the world of alleged, okay? Yeah. Uh, that a, a woman who was uh, wanted a job with Charlie Rose um, was told to come out to his home in Long Island uh, and, and meet him there so he could interview her. And she showed up and he exposed himself and he, uh, you know, came on to her and blah, 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 blah. And uh, she didn't get the job, <laughs> you know. Well, that's because um, she started to cry when he put her ha his hands down her pants. Yes, right. She started to cry. So I think there's a big difference between that and people getting a good laugh out of seeing Louis C.K.'s dick, you so know. What kind of job was it? Blow job? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it pays uh, three ninety five an hour. Uh, you know, I mean, four ninety five. All I'm saying is, is that I think you know Charlie. Ro to begin with, I don't like Charlie Rose. You know, I think he's one of the most fatuous people on television. Yeah. You know, uh, and I and I I'm, I I I get happy when I see the bad ones fall. Okay, and I think you'll notice in a lot of cases. I mean, you see that Al Franken. There are political motivations behind that one, but at least there are a lot of people coming to his defense. Uh, uh, there may be political motivations behind. No, we don't want to see your new dog, Tony. Oh, okay. I'm going to talk to him. I'll be right back. Another another thing oh, to poop in so our cute. streets. I want to see it. Oh, I'm okay. Show the dog. Show show the puppy to everybody. Hold on. Yeah. Oh. Which cartoon character did you name that dog after? Actually, it's Pebbles. <laughs> yeah. Coco. But I keep saying Coco, and then Pebbles. I'm fucked up really a little bit. She's going to go to sleep now. I'll be right back. Come on, Coco. I'm really going to be stern with the crate with her. Ow, stop biting my face. <laughs> Ow, stop biting. 
What do you say? Stop biting my what? <laughs> I, I think he's being sexually harassed by, by the dog. By the dog, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. What? Alex, what gets me is so many school teachers. Also, a school teacher in Colorado just got busted. Florida too. Yeah. It was hot. He, he did, Four. You say that quote men are doing it too. Well, what about the lady teachers also? They're just as dirty as the men are. So you can't put that on men also. Ladies can do the same damn thing. Yeah. And I hope Renee hears it also. Well, you know, it, it, it's, uh, um, I just think it's time for guys to start standing up a little bit in this deal. Never uh, going to happen. Uh, uh, well, you know what's going to happen? I'll tell you what's going to happen. And, and the whole thing's going to backfire. At some point, somebody's going to get accused. Some guy's going to get accused. And then he's going to get ostracized, and he's going to get fired, and then all of a sudden, we're, it's going to come out that it was all a lie, and that he right. didn't do it, okay? And then that is going to take the whole thing and, and make it just fall apart. The whole movement, the whole Me Too thing will just be stopped in its, in its tracks. Well, you know, these people who accuse have one vision of reality. The people who have been accused have another vision now, well, of reality. Well, let's let, no, you're, you're, you're only partially right. In some cases, that's the, that's the case. In other cases, I think in a lot of the Weinstein stuff, I think, you know, it's, it's a different story. Maybe the uh, Spacey and the Kid thing uh, is also, you know, uh, the, uh, the, you know uh, uh, that that story is that he didn't he didn't rape the kid he didn't do anything to the kid he, he just housed him with the kid he jumped you know? uh, jumped on top of him and the kid got away and left okay uh, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know but that that's the one that put him in the in the doghouse right okay he didn't even pull his dick out of now you know. a lot of other things about Spacey have been coming forward since then. Okay, including, stu including stuff in England, okay, in which he was using the old Vic to troll for, for, for young boys. Uh, yeah. Or at least that's what it's reported. So, you know, I mean, these guys are, and secondly, you may notice that there's a certain amount of them that, that nobody's coming to the defense of because they're assholes and they're happy to see them fall. I mean, everybody in Hollywood was waiting for Weinstein to just, you know, one way or the other fall, like, you know, suddenly his career turns bad or whatever. Uh, but they were hoping that that would happen. And when it happened, nobody's out there defending him. But Al Franken, on the other hand, is a guy they do like. And people are coming to his defense and saying this is so uncharacteristic for Al, you know. And uh, like this letter from the people from Saturday Night Live. And then there's the, you know, there's a question of the motivation of the woman who accused him. Uh, and the fact that she's a Trump uh, supporter, you know, so uh, and also that she's a radio uh, person and probably can use the publicity, you know. So there are a whole bunch of motivations there you can attach to that one. And what but, about the uh, the father of the basketball player? Did you see the interview? Oh yeah, he's, he's crazy today. He's looking, yeah, he's crazy. He's looking for publicity. He has a line <laughs> of, of shoes and things. Well, big ballers, shoes, or well, big no, the, ballers. He, he supposedly is a big, he, he's a big publicity hound, okay? He yeah. supposedly is very, very good at going out and getting publicity. That's what he's doing. Yeah, you know. And, and, the back and, of the sun. And, and what he's doing is he, 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 Trump is a sucker, okay? You can get Trump to tw tweet if you do a bad tweet. And he will just play right into it. And that's exactly what Ball wanted him to do. Yeah. And he got all his publicity. Yeah. Look at what the president said about him. So. Yeah, well, he is a he is a moron and an asshole. But, uh, you know, did you see the interview? W with who? Um, it was with uh, Chris Cuomo. Oh, I, was this Ball? Was hmm? this Ball? Yeah, yeah. What do you say? I mean, he's getting all the father. publicity he wants because he he suckered. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Cuomo was ready to throw him off the show. <laughs> That's how bad this guy was. Yeah, well, it, it, but 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 Trump got played for a patsy in that one. If Trump hadn't sit, written anything back, that would have just been yeah. a tweet this guy sent. Right. You know, but I mean, you can you can get to you can get to Trump. He's really good about that. You know. And, yeah. and I, uh, uh, but anyway, Some men of the people now, the <laughs> one that we've not now, I don't know if you caught up with this one today. I'm sure you probably did the, the, the latest 
person in Congress to suddenly come out Conyers. is John Conyers. Democrat. Now, I got to tell you, if there's any guy in Congress that is kind of a hero to a lot of people, it's John Conyers. This guy got beaten up, you know, in Selma, and uh, he's been he's been on the righteous side of everything if you're a lefty. And you, we really love John Conyers. Apparently, he loves everybody else, too. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and John Conyers, it turns out now, uh, paid off a... Uh, 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 a, a, su a suit against him, or paid off a uh, a person to not sue him, uh, and it was, was done. It and like it was money? and it was done with this, with with his with his, the Senate Senate's money. Uh, and just because you you try to settle something doesn't mean you're guilty at all. Uh, it means that you're this person is being a nuisance, and the nuisance won't go away. And if you pay them, they will. Otherwise, you're going to. You know, otherwise, you're going to spend more than that on lawyers just defending it. But I don't think you can do that with Senate money. <laughs> but no, you, there is a Senate fund for legal actions. You're kidding. There is yes. Uh, over the years, over the last couple of years, they, it, for, uh, over the last couple of years, I, ever, I think I read they put that, out like twenty-eight million out of that fund. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 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 So. And that was just for Conyers. <laughs> well, I mean, it was it. No. it was twenty seven thousand, I think. No, it, well, if his was twenty seven thousand, but they've yeah. spent about twenty eight million in the yeah, last couple cool. of years defending various actions and suits against <clears throat> senators and congressmen and so on. And that's our money. Yeah, and that's our money. You know, I don't know about you, but yes, uh, 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 I don't Tony. Need to do, but I'm going to have to sign off early because my mother. It's kind of important news for me upstairs. I think somebody is sick. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's somebody floor. I know directly, but close, but I think she wanted to tell me something, so I just got a message. Okay, well, if you want to come back later, do it, you know. Okay, thanks, Alex. Okay, bye-bye, Tony. Bye. Bye. Okay, at least we don't have to see that fucking dog now. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Fucking cat people. Yeah, right. The fucking cat people? Yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking cat person. Uh, but anyway, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, when, when we, we get into all of this, and I've, you know, this has been a big topic of discussion lately. I just think here we got some guys that, that we're being assailed in a way in which we don't, I don't think we deserve it, you know? How many times have you heard women, especially, like, I, I hear somebody like Amy Manuel, on, on the intersection go, all men are dogs, you know, all men are evil. Uh, and I, it really pisses me off because, hey, I know, the, I know you guys and you guys are nice. You would never engage in this kind of behavior, except for Scott maybe because he's a pervert. But uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want to run for uh, any elected office. I know that. That yeah. was what I know about me. But I, you yeah. know, and... and you just get accused. You know, there, there's no, there's not necessarily any proof, no validity. People accuse, and you're guilty. Well, most yeah, of these I know things, I'm guilty. Look, most, oh. most, <laughs> okay. of, most of these things are he said, she yeah. said. You know, because there are two people in a room, and the only people that really know what went on in that room are the two people who were in that room. And each of those people have a different version of what they felt went on in that room. But we can't minimize the kind of culture we've had where some men have used their power to do this sort of thing. And, and that I, is I, what I, has I, to stop. And so if, if this whole thing puts those guys on notice, then I'm all for it. But yeah. let's not... But I know why Scott's guilty. Why? He's Catholic. They're all guilty. Watch it! Watch it! <laughs> you know, they're always gold. looking special dispensation. They're looking for forgiveness. They're looking for, uh, uh, hey, you know... Scott. You have nothing to confess. Nothing? Well, you know, you, have to, you have to do something bad in order to confess it. Uh, just make hey, it up. Scott. It's enough in today's world. <laughs> Scott, can you see him? Can you see Bill in the confession with Father? Say his confessions? Yeah, I have sinned. Yeah, I, you said I, all right. You're crazy. Yeah. You're insane. Yeah, I, I charged somebody for uh, excess uh, furniture, and they really didn't have it. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it figures Bill would do it. Yeah, how yeah. many Hail Marys? 
Yeah, I just think <laughs> I, I just think guys are nicer than uh, than these women. Uh, I find these women to be female chauvinist pigs. Is what I find them to be. They are the same equivalent of male chauvinists, in that they paint every guy with the same brush. You disagree, Scott? Totally. Wow. Okay. Explain. Because we are. Because we are. We are. Okay. <laughs> Don't you stare at a woman's breast when she's walking down the street towards you? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, let me put go. no. Well, let me put but it this way. Let me I'm put it this Catholic. way. No, wait a minute. Let me put it this way. Wait, don't be at the Catholic. My no. answer to you is: I am aware of the breasts, but I don't stare at them. Well, it depends on the breasts. No, it I don't. I, I don't. I don't stare at them. Oh I, no! I, I I make it. I I really have to make a concerted effort to to avert my well, eyes. Yes. But you make a concerted effort. That's what I'm saying. Well, you know, not after I got a good look. <laughs> Once you're satisfied, yeah. God, Ted Hill marries a twenty-hour father. Well, folks, I guess my, I, I guess I guess he made his case, and I didn't make mine. You know, uh, but uh, the point I'm trying to make here is is that you know, um, yes, of course. Well, uh, I mean, you see a nice pair of uh, of uh, what what, uh, what politically correct term can I use? Fun, fun bags. Hooters, mm -hmm. tits, what other words? Can, boobs, how many, uh, boobs, boobs, breastuses, breastuses, melons, melons <laughs> um, <laughs> honeydews. Through, they did this on the inter, in the intersection a couple of weeks ago where they, uh, words for <clears throat> body parts. And yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't call in because I, I, I'd, I'd have been too graphic, I think. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> But, I mean, uh, let's be honest about something. We have to uh, throw into all of this equation the fact that uh, there is a natural thing going on where guys get turned on by women and women get turned on by guys and there's some interaction between those two. You know, I mean, this is, this is human nature and this is nature. Uh, yeah. As I said to, to Bubbles, and I didn't mean this as a joke, really, that it, men are meant to inseminate the herd. You know, that, that, is, uh, that is our, our biological place in life. And uh, women's job is to be selective. I don't know why, but, you know, it's the women that keep us honest because they go, no, I don't really feel like it. Or not tonight, dear, I've got a headache. Or, you know, but guys will... will Guys will make an attempt. I mean, the question is, how aggressive are you in that attempt? And if that attempt is just simply uh, the fact that, you know, you, you let somebody know you're interested, but you don't pursue it past that and let them decide if they want to pursue it, then I think you're fine. So, so Roy Moore, when he goes into the mall mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, lets the 20-year-old working in the store, he's mm -hmm. 30, uh, know that he's interested and she says this guy's a creep to her boss and the boss then says to the mall security hey keep this guy out of here all of a sudden 40 years later this son of a gun is, is uh, has been thrown out of the mall you know yeah and that's, that's what happened it's really terrible isn't it <laughs> yes yeah. Scott. Yeah. did you hear about roy moore's wife how they met how he met her no, no was that would be interesting. How old was she? Uh, uh, yeah, well, was fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, okay. Really? Well, that's that's uh, what goes on down there. He was about uh, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe thirty at the time. Did they meet at the hot dog and the stick? Uh, the hot dog and the stick. <laughs> <laughs> he was hanging out at the high school. Listen, he was hanging out at the high school at a at a dance recital. Oh, really? Well, you know, year old, you know, watching that fifteen-year-old girls dancing around. That's how. Well, that's where he first met his wife, and then he met her again later, and then he married her. Look, he's consistent. That's what. That's more than most of the senators can claim. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He likes them young. Yeah. He doesn't like older women. No. no. Well, don't forget, he wears a cowboy hat when he goes to the mall. That's right. He yeah. looks. He, as I said, he looks like Woody from Toy Story. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, they all look like that down. But, it, it, well, I mean, come on. The age of consent in, uh, in Alabama is uh, 13, isn't it? 
No, it's 16 <laughs> now, but I don't know what it was 40 years ago. Yeah. It might have been lower. I'm telling you, she was. <laughs> 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 she was she was fourteen. Uh, she, yeah. well, she was twelve, but she really looked fourteen. And his his, yeah. his of course his excuse is going to be she gave me permission. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her mom well, said it was okay. What do you think about uh, about Trump though? He seemingly, I mean, this somebody has got to start controlling this man because his the way he positions himself is not good. He said. Well, Roy Moore is better than getting a a Democrat in office. I agree. Well, wait a minute. No, come on, Phil. Hey, I I'd rather have a child buster Democrat. It's not a hard choice. No, for me. if you lived in Alabama, could you, in good conscience, vote for Roy Moore? Could you? Uh, Hell no. You, you might not. You uh, just if Roy, if Roy Moore gets elected. The first thing that's going to happen is they're going to uh, throw this guy out for a morals clause or whatever, and you know, which means that almost all of the Senate is going to get thrown out. But well, Roy, uh, well, and then they'll replace him with well, Jeff Sessions. Well, my question is, for instance, you got a guy like Al Franken. Uh, this yeah. incident that they're yelling and screaming about happened what, when he was uh, not in the Senate. He wasn't a senator yet. So yeah. the question is, do they have any jurisdiction over it? No, I don't know. Yeah, I, no. I don't know. You know, they might have uh, some. You know, if they find that the guy wasn't suitable to serve, uh, from uh, you know, do they have any rules about that? Well, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, now supposedly this thing where he he took a photo with a woman and he supposedly patted her on the ass. I mean, uh, so did President Bush. Uh, yeah, yeah, but he was in a wheelchair and his hand was down low enough where it doesn't could matter. Have. But anyway, here's the point. Here's Excuse. the point. Here's the point. Uh, uh, the question is, um, is that enough to throw him out of the Senate? Because he was a senator then. Is that does that bring great dishonor on the Senate? Um, I, I think they probably sanction him. They could, uh, you know, say give him some sort of cooties or something. But I don't think that they're going to throw him out. <laughs> Well, they, you know, he'd be the first one to say, you know, you know, I was not something I should have done. Okay, I understand that, you know, but I he didn't he didn't stick anything in anything. Okay, that's and also somebody said this the other day, and I can't remember who said this. It was some I think some talk show I was watching on TV that uh, let's say like in the case of this uh, Leanne Tweeden, who is uh, the accuser of Al Franken. She said, oh, I take his apology. Well, this person on the TV show said, well, then if she accepted his apology, oh, I think it was, I think it was like Bill Maher. If, we, he, if, she, if uh, she accepted his apology, then we should, because she is the offended party. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I agree. These things have gone too far. Yeah. And there needs to be a new paradigm. 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 Yeah. There needs to be a shift. Paradigm, I think, is a, techn a technological company somewhere. Uh, uh, shift. Yeah. But, I mean, I, uh, you know, I just think that um, um, uh, this thing at some point is going to go too far. Somebody is really going to get hurt who shouldn't be. And that's wrong. You know, and I don't want, you know, I think the cases against Weinstein are probably very true. One stuff against Spacey, very true. Uh, a, a lot of these allegations against Rose, very probably very true. I don't want to minimize them by lumping all these lesser cases in with those. We don't want to give the same weight of, of punishment to, as I said, we don't want to give the same punishment to a kid who steals a candy bar in a store, uh, the same punishment as we would give a murderer and put him to death. You know, it's called let punishment fit the crime. Well, it, it means that we have to give different weight to all these things. And we're not doing that because you got women out there, like Amy, for instance, who yell and scream that all guys are bad and we should hang them by the balls. Uh, so we as males are being attacked now. And I you know, think we have, to stand, we have to stand up and fight back. She was a bartender at one time. She may be right. 
you know, <laughs> they, you know, based on her knowledge of, uh, of uh, and encounters. Well, you, yeah. you, as a bartender, you get tips by being somewhat amiable, as it well, were. Sure, sure. Yeah. Her name's Amy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amy Abel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, I may have to run off to the bathroom at some point here because tonight mm. I made some hamburger and I don't think it was good. Mm. There was some. <laughs> uh oh. You freeze your burger and then thaw it? Huh? You freeze it and thaw it? No, it wasn't frozen. I bought it fresh at the store. It was in a uh, in a sealed plastic container, so it should be fresh. Mm. And I only had it for two days, you know. But then when I opened it up, it didn't smell great. But now, I don't I remember I, your uh, your wife saying <laughs> that she won't eat a burger like that because it comes from multiple cows. Yes, that, but she loves eating my hamburgers, so you know. Yeah. And I and this time I bought another brand because, uh, and it just might be the brand smelled differently. Yeah. But it, I bought a different brand because the other one wasn't available. But I've been having to go to the can a lot, so you know. But anyway, um, good to know. So, you know, uh, I, I just think that the whole thing is, is, is uh, really something. I mean, we've got now add to it John Lasseter, uh, who uh, <coughs> they're preemptive on that one. Uh, there was a show, a TV show I read about that um, uh, I'm trying to remember what show it was. Oh, uh, it was, uh, yeah, um, uh, Chicago, uh, uh, Chicago. Is there a Chicago PD or is it Chicago Fire? There's both. Chicago Fire. Well, one of those shows, a guy yeah, on it was well, let go because Chicago of Med, Chicago Fire. Yeah, it was Med let fire. go. And now here's how it here's how it really comes down. PBS <clears throat> is editing out of the David Letterman uh, ceremony honoring him for Kennedy Center's Mark Twain Prize. They've already done it. Uh, they're editing out Al Franken's appearance from tomorrow's David broadcast. David Letterman get accused of some shit too uh, a while yeah, back. He got accused of having uh, a, an ongoing affair for quite a while with his uh, assistant. Yeah. Uh, with his uh, and um, his wife wasn't all that mad because the girl had been an intern, and and so is his wife. So, you know, I mean, apparently that was a pool that Dave, you know, a lot of times you're going to get involved with people who you come into day-to-day -day contact with, you know. He, he, he didn't have much of a life outside of that show. He would go in there at 7 o'clock in the morning, leave there at 8 o'clock at night, and m most of the people he met were the people in that environment. And so why wouldn't he, if he had a uh, an intern who then became his assistant, uh, be maybe turned on by her, and they might be turned on by each other. And they and he he sent her through college. He did a lot of things. Very he was very nice to her. He's very good to her. And well, it the was, boss and, well, marrying and, the secretary. Well, well what you know? it was what was terrible about it was the injustice that was done to her. You know that she had to undergo this whole sordid uh, revelation, which wasn't sorted at all. I mean, I know people that worked over there. Everybody knew this was going on. Uh, you could tell it by watching the show. She was on it every week, playing some kind of part or whatever on the air. And it was a, it was a real um, relationship. It wasn't like he came on to her and then he molested her and forced her as the boss to do things and stuff like that. So you can't even put Dave in that category. You yeah. Know? Uh, he's still a pig. Huh? He's still a pig. <laughs> he's still a pig, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, I, I said this to, to Bubs, and, and it, it's true. Uh, Woody Allen's very lucky that he got accused when he did. Because if he got accused today, right now, he'd never make another movie. Okay? You know? But, it, but because he was the Lone Ranger at that point, there wasn't even a Bill Cosby <laughs> back then. Uh, in in the mix, he and then he married his uh, the girl he was having an affair with. He managed to get away with it, yeah. And he's still making movies, and you know, and nobody's yelling and screaming about that one. But the you know the guy who's getting the biggest pass of all is the one that we remember as all kinds of stories about him is Trump. 
I mean, yes. he's been getting the biggest pass of everybody. I mean, if you want to start having people come forward and start talking about... about uh, at 16. At 16. They're all liars. They're all liars. He, he said he didn't do it, and and he said Roy Moore says he didn't do it. Yeah, Roy Moore says he didn't do it. Who's, who's this calling on the phone? This is Schmooty. Hey, Schmooty. This, now, this is a woman I molested for a couple of years, right? <laughs> Me? Years, years. <laughs> or no, actually, I probably backed into you, and you're, you know, I backed into you, and your hands just happened to be there, and you know, I backed my ass into your hands, my boobs, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a like a truck going. But there. you know, working at a male-dominated company, I think I was only, you know, really sexually harassed one time, and being six feet tall. So I was an hourly and I'm at the drinking fountain and I'm drinking and this guy comes up behind me and slaps me right in the ass. And I follow him into the break room and I grab him. I think he was about five, six. I lifted him up, mm -hmm. slammed him against the Coke machine and told him if he did it one more time, I was going to kick him in the crotch so hard it would lodge his cock up his ass. <laughs> And he'd have to get a tweezer to get it out. And then I looked around me, and everyone's looking at me. And then I dropped him, and I walked out, and everything was back to normal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because That's a case for net neutrality. Well, no, I used to always make a joke about it. I, I wouldn't fuck around with, uh, with, with Schmooty because she could beat the crap out but, of me. You know, she, she, but, she, you know, this is, this is the problem I have. If you truly feel that you were harassed, why didn't you say something then and there and put everything on the line to take care of that? That's the issue I have. Instead of coming out years later. I think you, you've got a good point, but the argument that most feminists will come back at you with is these were men of power and they were afraid of losing their job or not getting the job, you know. Uh, and uh, who gives a shit? You work your way up. I mean, when I was pregnant, um, my company fought me for my unpaid FMLA. Are you kidding me? I'm saving the company over ten grand a month by taking FMLA. What's FMLA? I swear, wait, 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 what's, I swear to God. What's FMLA? The day before I was in, the Emily, day before I was Emily. induced, I walked into the EEOC and I filed a complaint. They call me back and they say, what do you want? I said, all I want is for one month off and that my benefits continue for my son and I. And that when I come back, I just slide back into my position. Guy calls me back an hour later and says, do we cheat him and how? Said, no problem. And I wrote, do we cheat him and how? The nicest thank you letter. I mean, come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you, but you know something? You were always a take charge woman. You know, and uh, in fact, I always love to tell people that I had a, a TV set that had to be taken up a flight of stairs. And the thing was a 27 inch set. You remember how heavy those were in those days? And you just picked, I remember that. you just picked the goddamn thing up and walked it up two flights of stairs. <laughs> you know, so you were like this. You big wuss. She was amazing. She was amazing. But uh, uh, was I a gentleman? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if we were walking down the street, you know, and oh, oh. we were on the left side of the street and I was on the right side of the sidewalk, I, you would gently yeah. take your right hand, put it on my waist, scoop me over so that you would be on the curb side. Yes, I always that I always did that with every woman I ever went out with and half of them didn't know what the hell I was doing cuz they they thought it was some kind of a mating dance, is I would always walk on the outside. That's so you could see the car that tossed the woman in, 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 into the uh, path Oncoming of the Oncoming traffic, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you and, know. you know, I was working such a screwed-up shift that we'd go to these movie previews, and all I'd have, the movie would start, I'd lay my head on his chest, and he let me fall asleep and drool all over his nice Alfani shirt. He was such a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I hope you'll come to the uh, legal action when all these women come forward and say that I was uh, molesting them, you know. Oh, my gosh. Well, I will oh, kick them all. I was always kind of a shy guy in a way. I mean, I, uh, I, uh, I, if I remember, you had to be the aggressive one, you know. 
I was, I went, you know, it was my son's birthday this past Friday. And so I went out um, with a friend of mine and her husband and we were talking about you. And I said, the first time Alex and I went out, he hardly said two words. And, you know, after Alex and I were hanging out, I'd have friends come up to me and say, how can you stand hanging around with him? And I tell them, you have no idea who this man is. His job is to entertain. He's an entertainer. So on the air, he is Alex Bennett. Off the air, he's Bennett Gordon Schwarzman. And, you know, some people couldn't understand that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 sometimes I couldn't understand it. You know, <laughs> sometimes when you're living a dual life like that, you you, uh, uh, you you have a problem sometimes with identity is what I'm saying. You know? Yes. Yeah. So. But. And I remember telling people he is the nicest, kindest, most giving person you will ever know. You just don't understand. And, of course, evil me. Remember the time I was telling a friend of mine, remember the time we were going down the freeway? And I think we're in the 300 ZX and we had pissed off some guy and he's pointing at us to pull over, pull over. And so we do. And as soon as he pulled over, I told you to gun it and he took off and it was the look on his dog's face. <laughs> the look on his dog's face. No, he actually, as was, we just go no, it was, by. no, he was giving us a bad time as we were driving down the road. And so I like gave him the finger or something. And, and then I yes. went, I went, pull over, pull over. Right, and so he pulled over to the side of the road, and we didn't. We just went, boom, you know. And that as you say, the, the, best. the dog. You know, well, we had a lot of fun times together. You know, you know. Yeah. So you know what? It's sad because this whole, you know, I understand the sexual harassment thing, and there's legitimate mm -hmm. sexual harassment, but you know, it's almost like if you even say hi to a woman. They're going to say, oh, yeah, years ago he said hi to me, but it was the way he said hi that was so demeaning. I mean, it's, very it's, it's going to turn, yes, well, exactly. You know, I can, I can and see that's some woman, where the danger comes in. I can see some woman being disgusted by Charlie Rose standing there naked when he comes out of a shower uh, uh, to try and seduce me, okay? But if it was George Clooney, would you hey, be hey, bothered hey. by that? No, you know. oh, I'd be so fucking happy. Yeah, yeah. So, He's just another Democrat. So what we're, saying, it, it, thing. what we're saying is the world has a hard-on against ugly people. So, you know. But I tell you, there's some women that as soon as their boss started holding them accountable, they'd throw up that card, and that used to piss me off. Yeah. Also, George Soros, didn't some people come out against him saying that he was doing something? I don't know. I, it, yeah. it's, it's all entirely possible. You know, I've gotten to the point where this whole thing is making me weird. Anymore. Huh? You know, uh, We're probably all doing something. Yeah. 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 But, but what's that? What was that? <laughs> I don't know what that I'm was. I'm sorry, it was my text. I it, thought it, I muted it. it. <laughs> 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 is, what is the sound that it makes, Kevin? Uh, Kevin? I don't know, but that was awesome. It's called robot or something. Uh, oh, something I see. That. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. It's, is it on the iPhone? Yeah. Yeah, the robot one. Yeah. Um, but, All right, well, I'm going to get going. I love you, and uh, oh, but, have a good holiday. By the, by the way, did I molest you okay? Absolutely. I was a good molester? Okay. I should tip you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're too sweet. You're too nice. Bye-bye, Schmooty. Bye. Yep, that's Schmooty. That's the world-famous Schmooty. Uh, that was a name she came up with for... Uh, for herself and and me, I she called me Schmoody too, and uh, uh, it was disgusting because we wanted to come up with a disgusting term that would make everybody vomit if we said it to each other. And years later, I was watching Seinfeld, and they came up with Schmoopy, you know. So anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, uh, Al Franken. He's been so they're going to edit him out of the uh, out of the out of the proceedings. Why? For David Letterman. Why? Um, it, it just makes no sense. Um, so uh, it will distract from the show's purpose, they say. Oh, this, what, I'm going to sit at home and go, oh, that's Al Franken? That's the guy that, you know, put his hands on the woman's breast on the airplane? 
No, I'm going to say that's Al Franken, the senator, and he's saying some nice things about David Letterman. And now on with the rest of the show. Oh, the the Soros connection was this guy, uh, Howard Rubin. Uh, I guess he was a manager at George Soros Investment Fund. Yeah. And uh, he allegedly paid women between two and five thousand dollars to engage in sex sessions. And uh, uh, they're claiming uh, sexual abuse and uh, and, uh, uh, you know. But this is not Soros himself. Oh, no, this is somebody. Oh, okay, Okay. Okay. Leave it to Phil to suddenly say it's George Soros. You know. Well, hey, uh, you know, I, I, I oh, here, find he, the story. He, he, Chicago PD, the guy's name is Jason Big, or Beg, and he was investigated, and I guess they got rid of him off the show or something like that. So it, 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 it's getting to be, um, uh, oh, and um, let me see here. There are a couple of other stories. That, 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 oh, Jeffrey Tambor. God, they, the names just keep on coming, don't they? Is everybody mm-hmm. familiar with who Jeffrey Tambor is? Yeah, he's a, he plays a transsexual. Yeah. Yeah, on a trans. Yeah, and a transsexual was one of the uh, people that accused him, right? I, 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 uh, here, Maybe here, he was in character, you know? He's facing well, two, two accusations of sexual harassment by members of the transparent team that he strongly, de- that he strongly denied. The story says that Tambor told uh, Deadline Hollywood, I've already made clear my deep regret if any action of mine was ever misinterpreted by anyone as being aggressive. But the idea that I would deliberately harass anyone is simply and utterly untrue. Given the politicized atmosphere that seems to have afflicted our set, I don't see how I can return to Transparent. So he is quitting the show. Uh, um they start, Amazon started an investigation into the, uh, oh yeah, here's what it was. Uh, uh, a, a co-writer star, Tracy Lissette, added her claim to the actor's inappropriate language and physical contact to the original accusations from Tambor's personal at- assistant, Van Barnes, which is, I guess, a guy. Hmm. Amazon, well, at least he's an equal opportunity molester. Uh, Amazon started an investigation into the Van Barnes allegations, but before the results of that investigation could be made public, Tambor resigned from the transparent role. So he's quitting because he just doesn't want, he doesn't like the atmosphere that's been created about him on the set. So this is a kind of a different reason for quitting. Um, Earlier, a private Facebook post that subsequently went viral, Barnes claimed that an unnamed employer told her, oh, I guess Van Barnes is a woman. Uh, or maybe it's a guy who's a trans, uh, who knows? I should, I should be sleeping with him if I want Hollywood industry appropriate pay. In addition, she said her employer would pat her on the bottom, play pornography at loud volumes, and call her useless. Well, that's uncalled for. It's not nice. Um, so, uh, it, it, he, uh, let's see here. During uh, season two, filming a bonding scene between their characters, Tambor made lascivious remarks towards her when she emerged from wardrobe. My God, Trace, I want to attack you sexually, he said. So, I guess that's not, not considered correct anymore uh, to do what you consider as a backhanded compliment. So you know, I mean, we're really we're we're in we're in a very deep set of uh, depression here. Yes, Jeff. I think we should all understand that thousands and thousands of women are going to have jobs that they didn't have before from all these guys who are getting f- fired. <laughs> They'll be replaced. Be no yeah. So the the next. Uh, the next years of congresswomen and, and senators, I wonder what percentage of it will be women. It'll be very interesting. Well, you know, uh, women want to be on an equal footing with guys when it comes to jobs, when it comes to life itself. And 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 yet, and I'm going to say that, I've said this before, and, and I, this makes women mad when I say it, for years, men were put in the awful position of having to be the breadwinner. Uh, I mean, the pressure of being a breadwinner for some guys was unrelenting. Some of them did as much as kill themselves 
doing the job, like going into coal mines and whatever to bring home pay. Uh, in those days, you never had women going down into the coal mines. You never had women doing a lot of the jobs that were just dirt shitty jobs because they, these guys had kids and a wife and so on at home and, and had to, was because he was a guy, he was supposed to support them. Uh, did we, get, we never got any thanks for that, did we? You know? We never got anybody saying what a pressure hey. that was for guys. That's what I hate about sexual uh, uh, imperatives. That well, you know, yeah, you're a guy and you have to go out and you know have uh, hit the have the job. You know, uh, I find that y y you get what I'm saying. In other words, I, I just think that we had to do that for years, and uh, I I find it horrible that we had to. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. But it's it's becoming uh, today that a number of women, they're the the people who have to bring in the bacon, so to speak. Well, they're having to because uh, um, men are finding it hard to find jobs. Uh, yeah, uh, it, they're all getting uh, accused of sexual assault. Well, that too. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. All I'm trying to say is that when I grew up, I I was always made to feel that if I had a wife I and kids, I had to support them. And that the wife didn't go to work. She, the deal we made was that she stayed home and raised, raised the kids during the day and, and cooked the meals and was in charge of the household. And I went out and did whatever job I did. Um, I always found that terrible, even back then. I found I think well, we have to free ourselves from our sexual stereotypes of what we're supposed to be, you know. And um, but I don't think that uh, uh, I don't think women are going to find it that satisfying to suddenly get the same ulcers that guys did with some of the jobs we had to take. You know, they're, one day they're going to go, what, what did I want this for? You know, yes, uh, Jeff. On medical school. Mm -hmm. these days uh it was at least 50 percent women in medical school right now and i think it's even going higher where it's really? more women uh compared to men and i don't know why but obviously that's happening you know it's kind of interesting i saw a documentary they did about women directors and these women directors were complaining that there's so few women directors in hollywood well, they, these were movie directors, and uh, uh, I grant you that there are much, you know, like the the biggest director in movies right now is the woman who, who the woman who directed Wonder Woman. She was a woman, you know. Um, I guess if you're doing an all black film, you better have a black director. And if you're doing an all woman a woman centered film, you should have a woman do it. But. Uh, uh, there was this um, uh, whole thing about n women directors are, you know, there's just not very many women directors in Hollywood. And yet, if you go look at television, check out the television credits every week. See how many women's names you see there as directors. I would say that at least 50% of the names on those credits are women directing those shows. <laughs> women directors are working like crazy in television. In fact, it's getting to the point where I find it hard to find a guy's name there. Uh, so, uh, you know, yeah. they're bitching that they can't do a movie, but there are all those jobs in television. And those aren't, the, you know, those aren't the big pressure jobs because if you're a, if you're a movie director and you've got a film that flops, you don't get a you don't get another film. You get one more, and if that flops, you're gone. If you do a television show, nobody knows because you go on to the next one. You're a director for hire. So I think the better of the two jobs is I'd rather be a director in TV than a director in movies the, because the pressure isn't as great. But anyway, I don't know what I'm saying here. I wish we had a woman in the crowd here, but Renee isn't calling. Uh, and uh, uh, I'd like to have a woman present their side of the story in all of this. But, uh, you know. Uh, I, that's it. Anyway, so what else is happening in the news? Anything? We uh, big news today was Charlie Rose. He was yeah. that was the big stink today. Then the big stink was the fact that your president uh, 
Phil, because he's not mine, uh, defended Roy Moore, or or at least said it's better that we have Roy Moore than a Democrat. I mean, that get what he's saying. He's saying a child molester is better than a Democrat. Uh, That's here's basically the same what he's saying. That you and Renee have, which is. He's not a child molester. He hasn't been convicted. He's uh, not a two I, I, I grant you that. He's, I grant you that, and I've gone against one of my better rules, which yeah. is that you know somebody should be proven guilty before we assume right. that. It's guilt. a court of public opinion, and uh, so basically, it, he's you know you got Democrat, you got a guy that's accused. He has he hasn't even been charged. He's been accused, and you know, and you can't. You can't, uh, uh, you know, if somebody's going to charge him, let him charge him. If they if they're going to try him, let him try him. But right now, he's guilty. Well, of so nothing. does that mean that if I'm if I live in Alabama, in spite of the fact that I know that this guy may be a pederast or this guy may be yeah, a, may be, a, may be a, a, a child molester or a harasser or whatever, yeah. that I should still vote for him and not use that as my reason for not voting for him. Yeah, because he's not guilty until he's proven guilty. Yeah, but do I have to? This do is I, America. We, we got to. How do I? How do I get myself to to separate that? that Even me, who's the, who's Mister Honest, I don't think if I found out that I was going to vote for somebody and they had you, done something as onerous as he is accused of having done, that I could vote for the guy. But your savior is that he's a Republican, and you wouldn't vote for him anyway. So you know, it, it, bottom line is. The guy has just been accused, and 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 he hasn't had his day in court, you know. Well, but that's and, not going to happen before this uh, this election. He, listen, I knows. I don't think at this point it doesn't look like he's going to win the election. Uh, I don't know. There's yeah. a chance. Uh, they're saying they're trying to keep his uh, ratings in the forty percentile uh, because uh, they want to keep him away from the teens. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I give you that one. I give you okay. that one. Did you make that up well, yourself, or did you get uh, it? I, I saw something earlier, and uh, I, I couldn't remember the exact yeah, uh, yeah. layout. But, yeah, uh, we want to so want to keep him in the forties so we don't get him into the teens. Yeah, uh, I uh, yeah. Wow, what a story that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but I mean, just the way that Trump put it today—that it was, you know, well, better better someone is being accused of child molestation. <laughs> than a Democrat. That's what he said. That's, no, that's <laughs> he what he said. said. He said uh, more uh, claims emphat emphatically that he w did not do these things. Uh -huh. And what did he do oh, a few well. days ago where Al Franken was concerned? Well, Al Franken admitted to it <laughs> and apologized. Remember, <laughs> you know, I mean, just think about it. Al Franken said he did it and, and, and he was sorry. And and Roy Moore is saying I didn't do those things. Yeah, but do you and know what nobody's doing? Then why did he get thrown out of the mall then? He didn't Tractor get thrown Tippy. out of the mall. He got thrown out of the mall. Damn it! Listening, Mike. Uh, I I gave that I, I gave that scenario as it's accurately reported. Twenty year old woman working in the store. This guy uh, made advances and was interested in the gal that worked in the store. She complained to her manager. The manager told the mall cop to keep him out of there, and that's how he ended he, up. Why did he get thrown out of the mall then? He didn't get thrown out of the mall. He did too. He wanted him to stay away you from the store. Son of a bitch, he did. Oh, you were there. I wasn't selling fish. Uh, you know, Bullshit. you were there. So yeah, you were there just on your cheap carpet. That's right. So you know the and, and so this way I know. Look, it just is more. Uh, uh, more is more. <laughs> or is an asshole. Well, uh, maybe you're an asshole for jumping to conclusions. I'm not. Oh, that's that's a that's a good uh, retort. Oh, not me. <laughs> you know how can you how can you convict this guy in the court of uh, uh, of, of public opinion? Wow. You know, isn't that well, wait, wait, Jeff? Jeff, if, Jeff. If you're from Atlanta, uh, then it's your responsibility to vote and to decide who you're going to vote for. You mean Alabama? In Alabama, yeah. And um, I mean, Phil, what would you do if you were there? 
Uh, I, I'd probably vote for Roy Moore. It figures. Uh, Another super Republican. I'm looking at the balance of power in the Senate. I'm looking at the legislation that right now needs to pass. And uh, and, and, and morality be damned. Uh, there's there's no morality to be damned. The man is innocent until proven guilty. There is a preponderance of, of women that have come forward. Doesn't matter. About him. It does, then, Phil. Then charge him. Then charge him. Then file file a lawsuit. The why it is all these lawyers are trying to put pressure on these ladies. Yes. See? Well, the lawyers are there for the money. There's and also there's also, also a problem here, Phil. Yeah. There's also a problem oh, here. Bullshit. Uh, uh, time is of the essence. The election is a few weeks away. All right. right. December. And, uh, yeah. And and um, uh, you're going to have to take this into consideration when you're voting. You just have to. There's no way you can separate it. Some people will listen. And, and, listen. And listen. Listen. When people run outcome. for political office, when people run for political office, they continually are are um, um, targets, uh, targets right. for for all kinds of claims by their opponents all right he's run eight times how come only now uh these these people have come <laughs> out you got that straight from well, trump did you, you got that straight listen. from trump yeah yeah you how got come? that straight I mean, from it's trump very simple. Uh, he does your talking trump, points trump yes kevin a moment of, uh, uh, you know a moment of lucidity too you know yeah. where you know where he's lucid and, and comes up with the right answer yeah sure uh, Kevin, he took at his pills. Kevin, the one the one gal that did come come out and talk about it said that she was, and I kind of understood her. She was kind of she was protecting her kids when she could have come out at one point. Uh, she talked to her kids about it, and her kids said, "Oh, you're going to wreck us at school," and that sort of thing, and then. There was going to be uh, another time that she talked to him about. It. So she's brought this up several times in the last. There are also some. There years. are some people, Phil, who uh, the greatest, the greatest the protection, the greatest, the greatest protection a guy like Roy Moore has against these kind of accusations is he is someone in the public eye. He is yeah. well known. Uh, there is a fear that if they we were to go against them, there would be some kind of repercussions. And I think over the years, people have not said something because they would rather be living a quiet life rather than one that is fraught with problems because you suddenly made an accusation against this guy. Now, what about uh, the fight that he had over the Ten Commandments that was in his uh, courtroom? And there were all sorts of people coming out. Was it out. in his courtroom or was it on the steps of the courthouse? Uh, I thought I it was it, in his courtroom, but it doesn't matter. Wasn't that steps, on the steps of the courthouse? Wasn't that the one they were fighting about? Yeah, it was close enough. And so bottom line is, you know, all of these people were coming out at that time. Why didn't she hop on the bandwagon a couple of years ago? Uh, kids were old enough and everybody was jumping on the guy. Kevin? Well, there's also a point that uh, you reach in your life where you just don't give a shit anymore and you're going to say what you're going to say. I'm almost there. I'm pretty close to Yeah, there. the kids are off to school. I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah. You just get to the point, you know, that, you know, whatever, you know. Well, maybe her points at the I'm same time that they were piling shit on him over this Ten Commandments thing. But, uh, you know, all I know is the guy's run all of these times. Uh, he's run for senator, I think, before. Uh, and he's lost a number of times, didn't he? Uh, I don't. I don't know his record, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think you're right, though. He did lose once or twice. I think maybe once. And uh, you know, he, uh, so you know, where where were these people? And even if this woman had, you know, these reservations and so forth, there's nine that have come out of the woodworks now. You know, nine I, I, of them had the same. Uh, 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 you know, uh, well, you know, uh, Kevin makes a good point that they're older now, and they maybe felt that at this point in their life they could do it. Their kids are off, the, off, the, out of the house, uh, and uh, the only person that's going to be affected by them coming out will be themselves. And, not and, if, and they don't want to drag. They they're not going to drag their family down with them and all of that. I I see that as a perfectly lucid observation on Kevin's part. Well, you know their interpretation, what the law was 30, 40 years ago. I I don't I don't know. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a website that I can look at that would tell me what the age of consent is in all states, but 
uh, that's not going to tell me what the age of consent was in 1970. It wasn't it 14. Was. It wasn't 14. So. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't. Uh, you know, and you know the, Wolf. you know what this woman is saying. You know, I'm sure there's a, there's a grain of truth to it. The only thing what, what, is, wait, wait, what, what state? Timing. What state did Jerry Lee Lewis marry his cousin in? Was it Louisiana? Uh, was it Lu Louisiana? No, was it Louisiana? Yeah. Okay, and, yes. he, and, and uh, she was fourteen. She was thirteen. She was, I think, she was fourteen. I think. Thirteen. Thirteen. I thought thirteen. Okay. He was a cousin to uh, what's his name? Some reverend. Jimmy Swagger. Yeah. Yeah. Is his cousin or? Uh, they're uh, they're cousins. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Jimmy Swagger sings too. And also uh, the uh, uh, the guy uh, in Texas, Mickey Gilly, I think, was their cousin too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, anyway, you don't know who Mickey Gilly is. You live in Texas, and you don't know who, huh? Yeah, I don't know Gilly. if he's a cousin. I don't know who he is. I think they were. Yeah, I think I saw a documentary the other day, and they said Mickey Gilly was a cousin too. Didn't he have the the Bronco horse or something that they used the mechanical horse? That was where yes. they made they made uh, the uh, what, Urban Cowboy right. at at, yeah, Nick, at, Cowboy. In, at Gillies uh, in Houston, uh, but uh, boy, I'm getting punchy tonight for some reason. I'm trying to get out coherent thoughts here. It's getting old, folks, and it's not <laughs> getting coherent now. Um, uh, it, it, you know, um, the fact of the matter is that, oh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Did I ever tell you the story about Jerry Lee Lewis? Yeah, I probably did. Probably. But I'll tell Maybe. it anyway. Uh, that I promoted a dance in Petaluma, California with Jerry Lee Lewis. I and another guy, and we decided we were going to be big promoters. And we promoted this. In those days, rather than concerts, you had them. They were called dances because you didn't have seating. And people would stand there, and they would dance to the music as it played. We did it at the Petaluma Civic Auditorium or whatever. And um, it's before the show, and he's got a, uh, um, I guess he was his drummer or his, uh, or another, or bass player or whatever. And uh, I'm just trying to make pleasant conversation. And I look at him and I say, is it true that Jerry Lee married his 14-year-old cousin? And he said, yeah, it's my daughter. <laughs> Shit. Boy, did I feel I just kind of like I melted into the floor. You know, I just I think, well, nice meeting you. See you later. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the well, more. I've heard that one. That is a new one. I have not. You've heard never that heard that one? Oh, never good. heard you uh, tell that one. I must have missed a yeah. couple of shows. In uh, the age of consent in Alabama. Yeah. In 1880. 1880 was 10. Oh, really? I'm not kidding. Yeah, but the I average life the, the average <laughs> lifespan was 35. So I guess you had to adjust for that, you know. 40 was wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but we're not lo we're not looking for the 1800s. We're looking for now. Well, I I understand. I think it was 16. Uh, um uh, I think it was 16 uh, back then in the, in the 70s. Now, when you say age of consent, does that mean she's able to get married or that you can have sex with her and not have to pay the price? Uh, that's that's an interesting question. What does the age of consent mean? Because age of consent would, well, it should, it, it, I always took it to mean you, you could have sex with them. You know, I know in California it was, what, 18. Uh, yeah. And, it, you know, as I said the other night, if you were a kid and you had, you know, you were like, uh, you were a guy and you were 16 and your girlfriend was 15, they could charge you with statutory rape, even though you were 16 and underage. That that didn't count. You just you keep your mitts <clears throat> off that, you know, underage Okay, it, it seems as though the age of consent law and legal definition uh, age of consent refers to the legality defined age, legally defined age at which a person is no longer required to obtain parental consent to get married. Sexual intercourse with a person under the age of consent may lead to criminal charges of statutory rape or sexual assault. Yeah. Yeah. So it's both. Uh, no. Uh, once they reach the age of consent, 
they can get married. And if you have sex with someone who's under the age of consent, yeah. then it would lead well, to... Well, I, I was once charged right. with statuary rape, but uh, Lee's horse gave me permission. <laughs> so that's a little joke I wish I hadn't said. Mm. But I'm punchy tonight. What the hell, you know. So, anything for a joke. Yeah. We've had a lot of people watching the show tonight. It's amazing. Why? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, we don't do anything, really. Everybody just sits there. Nobody's taking their clothes off, you know. Nobody's exposing <laughs> themselves. Oh. <laughs> no. Not now. Wait, no, no, no. Oh, in my eyes. Jack off. <laughs> Well, you know what we should do is we should probably uh, get you to expose yourself and then see how many people, and wait to see how long it takes somebody to say, don't. <laughs> you know, I mean, that was what I was saying about Louis C.K. I mean, I understand that he exposed himself to some women, but he was a gentleman and he asked permission. And nobody said no. You know, the interesting so then thing when he pulled it Seth out, Orthen. you know, did anybody leave? No, I, they were looking at this penis hanging out. It's so he's jacking off, too. Yeah. I mean, if 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 uh, Scott came over to my house and pulled out his dick and started jerking off, I'd throw him out of the house, you know, or <laughs> I'd get him to walk out <laughs> of the <laughs> house. Hey, when was that? You know, the interesting thing wait, here. wait a minute, Kevin, what? When was that, supposedly? What? The, the Louis C.K. thing. Oh, a couple of years ago. God, you would think one of them had a cell phone. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah. all you see nowadays. Yeah, but, I mean, the fact that nobody left and that they sat there and watched and that when he yeah. asked for permission, nobody said, no, Louis, I don't want to see your goddamn exactly. dick. You know, well, well, n none of them said that. Well, and then the answer they give is, well, they probably all felt intimidated it, because they were looking for work from Louis. I don't think that Louis would not hire you and use as his excuse that you wouldn't look at his penis. I, I wouldn't think so. Hey, you know. can I interject one thing about this more thing? Yeah. Uh, I'm reading a Washington Post thing, and it says, Lee Korfman says she, was for says she was 14 when an older man approached her outside a courtroom, and she was sitting on a wooden bench with her mother. Uh, they recall the man introduced himself as Roy Moore. She says... She was 14, but if she was 16, it would have been, uh, you know, there would have been consent. Uh, so the guy approached her on a park bench and uh, while she was sitting there with her mother, and she claimed she was 14. She can't prove she was 14. Yeah, but, but did, did but, he did do he, anything improper <laughs> is the question. Uh, uh, doesn't seem to be. Uh, he approached her. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, the... Uh, yeah. So, and Moore chatted with her and asked her for a phone number. Days later, he says he picked her up around the corner from her house, drove 30 minutes to his home, told her how pretty she was, kissed her, and on the second visit, he took off her shirt, pants, removed his clothes, touched her all over her bra and underpants. She says, uh, and guided her hand to touch him over his underwear. Uh, she says, I just wanted to over. Here we go. She, she, she didn't have a driver's license yet. I couldn't check. I couldn't yeah. check her wallet. <laughs> well, anyway, you know, uh, it's. You know, with that beard, you even make it more convincing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I look at it and she says she claims she was 14. You know? Uh, it's just... Uh, well, why would she lie about being 14? She says they did not have intercourse. Um, she, we never said she did. Uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, of the four women, the youngest at the time was Korfman, who was the only one says she had sexual contact with Moore that went beyond kissing, but says they did not have intercourse. So, you know... Because he got a little dick. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, but for them, it would be the biggest one they ever saw. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I doubt it. He couldn't even get it out of his underwear. I doubt it. You know, he, he had he, to put his tweezers out. He was, uh, you know, uh, well endowed. Women seem to know. Well, you know, you know something, though, when you're young, I guess I guess to say this, 
nobody knows whether a they're well endowed or not because you don't know what the size of your penis is in comparison to anything else and you secondly, most, most women, the first penis they ever have, they don't know if all penises aren't exactly the same size. Sure, they, you, they told you, oh, it's the biggest one I've ever seen. Now, you, didn't you go to PE class? No, I got that a lot. Yeah. And they weren't lying. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. Um, uh, you know, I mean... Yeah. It, but what I'm saying is, is, is that, you know, you're not you, a, a girl of 14 is going to go, oh, well, that's a big penis. They don't know. You don't know what a big penis is or a small penis is. And I don't know why we're even having this discussion. <laughs> yes, uh, Jeff. I have one other different discussion that we can go in. Oh, good. Thank God. Thank God. And Thank I, you. I'd have to do I with think it. Trump <laughs> likes elephants yeah he's pardoning them and he's and he decided to take off the specification for bringing in elephant components now into the United States. yeah yeah Jeff, tusks and things like which that. he also approved that a couple of weeks ago now what, no. what is this it, exactly can I, can I interject here on yeah, that yeah sure it was a uh, a agency that lifted the ban. Uh, it had nothing to do with Trump. Uh, the, the agency lifted the ban, and then Trump uh, said he's not going to he's not going to uh, sign it. You know, so that uh, he wasn't going to take off the, uh, the this trophy thing. So right? he That's so he's he's he's, he's against he he's against them one. as trophies. Is that what you're saying? Uh, What's that? No, it's the illegal ivory uh, trade and the trophy trade of of uh, shooting animals and then uh, bringing oh. them back to the states. He's a, he's against that. He's against it. He's against and, it, and, and, and he I, said it was it was horrible to do that. How right. come he? How come he? How come he, he loves his son doing it? Uh, he forgot about that. Hey, it was it was the it was the game commission, I believe, uh, that uh, that that had something to do with it. That that they were, they were going to lift the ban, and uh, and so Trump came in against it. Trump. But never I also heard uh, malaria had something to talk talk to him about it too. Maybe he helped. She helped it along. Well, you know, I mean, whatever. Uh, if first it's ladies, done, it's done. That's good. A lot of first ladies influence presidents. That's good. For Eleanor Roosevelt. You know, I'll give him a mark for that. Yeah. Well, she was a very strong woman, and uh, also her husband wasn't in great shape. I mean, Nancy Reagan ran the second uh, Reagan administration. Oh yeah, because he mm -hmm. was incapable. He was already starting to talk to the walls. You know, well, yeah. didn't she use tarot cards? Uh, she had a she had a card reader. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, but uh, that she, helps. Is, no, but she 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 was running the roost at a certain point there. She was running the government. Wasn't yeah. there yeah. another president's wife that also ran the White House? Who was yes. it Harding? Who had a heart attack? Uh, and she kind of ran ran it. Food the poisoning. Lincoln. Uh, no. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't Lincoln. Lincoln's wife was not Lincoln. Um, I'm not thinking of the name of the doctor. It was Harding or Warren? No, it wasn't. Hmm. Warren G. Huh. Morton One of them had a stroke and and was yeah. kind of incapacitated. So and his wife kind of ran the business for a while. It could have been Harding. Could have been uh, even. And, uh, and what the, did they do? Try to hide it from the public? Oh yeah. Oh, they yeah. always do. Yeah. It was a lot oh, of reporting the internet. Yeah. 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 Might have been Wilson too. I'm not sure. That's what I think it. Was. I think it was. I think it was I, Wilson. Well, Wilson had a lot of influence from a lot of people, like that guy Edward House. Uh, was uh, was probably the uh, Wilson. He was re really running the show during the Wilson administration. Really, I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah, Edward House started the Council on Foreign Relations. Yeah, uh, and um, uh, he's one of those guys. That he, he started that one world government stuff. Yeah, uh, I, I'm trying to think. Uh, have we have we really had a great president during our lifetime? I mean, during my lifetime, I can't. Great. I, you know, I think probably the greatest president in my lifetime was Johnson, to be honest with you. 
I was just, yeah, it's hard to pick one out. You know, I thought Reagan. Because it was either one or the other side that was all. Well, he was plus and minus. What? Yeah. Who? Reagan? Who who was plus and minus? Our our, our friend from Texas. Oh, Johnson, Uh, yeah. Johnson. I mean, he was great at a lot of things. And with Vietnam War. Well, no, here's the problem. Here's the problem with Johnson. Johnson was very much a man of the of the land. In other words, you have some presidents that are good foreign uh, policy presidents because they're worldly. And then you have presidents who aren't worldly, who basically grew up on the farm and, you know, hardly left the United States and didn't really have a world vision. And when he that was, was Johnson's Senate. problem. Johnson did not have yeah. a world vision. But when it came to domestic <laughs> he, stuff, he was, he was great. Yeah, when he was in the Senate, didn't he run it? Uh, you know, he was he the speaker? He ran it with an iron fist, right? And uh, you know, he wielded a lot of power and 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 got things done. Now they made uh, I don't know if he was on the foreign relations board or if he was just you know I don't know what seats he held, but uh, whatever he did, uh, uh, people did what he wanted them to do. Uh, I, and I think that he overstepped himself uh, with Vietnam, uh, you know, by going in and uh, creating a war that uh, wasn't necessary. He he got he, he got himself into a mess there, and he and he knew it too. Uh, when uh, finally uh, Walter Cronkite went on the air one night and suddenly came out against the war, which was something that Cronkite hardly ever did was give a political opinion. <laughs> uh, Lyndon Johnson famously was saying to somebody. And this was the reason he suddenly decided not to run for president again. Once I've lost Walter Cronkite, I've lost the country. And it was true. Yeah, I remember. Uh, it wasn't was, Johnson. Was, Johnson was not in good health either. What, am I right? No, he he lived a, quite quite a bit after after his presidency. It, no, it, not, not too long. Not too long. But the, the, the way like twenty three. There was so many protests in the streets. There was so much uh, uh, uprising against Johnson and, and against the war. Uh, I don't think he had a he had a chance in hell. It was minor compared to what Nixon got. It was very uh, minor. The yeah. protests were minor compared to popular. what Nixon got. I know, but so Nixon was very popular. To who? He got reelected to who? with a tremendous. Uh, uh, to Nixon who? was a crook. No, he wasn't. Uh, he was a he was a very smart guy, and he just didn't get along with the press. But he, you know, he gave us. Uh, he was an environmentalist. Uh, he, uh, he no, what you're doing is China. you're comparing him now to shit. Okay, <laughs> and compared and compared to tr- and compared to tr- and compared to Trump, Nixon was wonderful. Well, I, I like Trump too, but you know, but Nixon, Nixon, you know, you're comparing. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, Trump. Nixon uh, is going to stand the test of time and is going to be shown to be one of the better presidents. And uh, uh, you'll see, it's already turning. It's no, already actually, it's structure. turning the other way. It, it, for a while there, everybody was going, well, you know, he's better than than Bush, and and now it's turning again. I mean, it, it, there was a lot okay. wrong. Nixon? There was a lot wrong with Nixon. I mean, he will, you know. I mean, well, you got to remember, know, he left he, office in pre- shame. Yeah, he had a lot of pressure on him at the end. I mean, you know, the the the, the guy was shamed, and uh, and it, and he's a, he was a true American. He really believed in America yeah, first. Yeah, well, if he believed in crook. America first, he would also believe in in, in, in 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 the ethics of America, which is you don't go and spy on your political enemies. Did That's right, Watergate. Or did he just? Watergate. Did you just? Did you just? Forget Watergate, Watergate, Phil. No, was loyal. Watergate. 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 Phil. Watergate. Yeah. Gate. Now, he was a crook. He was a crook, Phil. He yeah. had half his staff was spying on each other. The, the best. What the hell do you call that? Life is was Eisenhower. Tell me about Eisenhower. He well, was great. He was a nice guy. He didn't guy. do anything yeah, wrong. He was, did a, he? he was a nice enough guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or but he had way no war? did he have war? I don't think but, so. Did but he? look at what look at what Just Johnson did for civil rights in this country. And this was a uh, guy who, for all intents and purposes, should have been a member of the Ku Klux Klan. It was Kennedy the redneck, yeah. that did the things for civil rights. And what Johnson said is he was going to pr- continue to pursue Kennedy's uh, 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 wishes uh, when it, when it came to civil rights. Yes, all and he, and he was, did it, and he, he did it very was, well, and he created uh, most of the civil rights, more civil rights legislation than we ever had in this country. 
Yes, but, anyway. but it was all put into place during, uh, uh, as uh, by Kennedy. No, it was it was initiated by Kennedy. But then, uh, listen, Medicare is Johnson. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm sorry. I, I was kind of. I had a brain fart going on here for a while. Did it sound well, that way? Go to the bathroom. Huh? No. Wasn't uh, that bad. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. I want to thank uh, Scott. Mm-hmm. We always love seeing Scott here on the rare occasions lately, uh, but we love having <laughs> you here, Scott. So do it more, okay? Uh, Mike, thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. You're Phil, welcome. as always, thank you. And Jeff, uh, a big thank you to you as well. Uh, why don't all of you just give a, a big wave goodbye to everybody? That's our citizens panel for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm Alex Bennett. Let me uh, turn a few things off here, you know, because I'm I'm running the whole show, folks, and I I got to turn the, the phones off so that the next show, which is Jack and Amy, uh, can uh, can uh, you know uh, uh, have the have the phones available to them. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, at uh, 1 o'clock this morning, Connections. I'll see you tomorrow night for our last night before Thanksgiving. We're not on on Thursday. None of us are on on Thursday. And then Friday we'll be back again. In the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>